The pursuit of happiness is a right demanded in our Declaration of Independence, but some other countries may be doing it better than we are. For the sixth time in a row, Finland tops this year's list of happiest nations. That's followed by Denmark and Iceland. The United States comes in 15th. But what does make us happy? And can we do more of that to stay that way? Barry Peterson talked to some experts. <laughs> there is nothing like the pure happiness of a baby's laughter. We were born happy. We were also born sad. You know, babies cry. <laughs> Toddlers tantrum. And then it's over in a moment, right? So I think what we're talking about is being able to move in and out of life's joys and sorrows. Relationships are so complicated. Dr. Bob Waldinger is a professor of psychiatry at Harvard University, and he is the fourth person to run the ongoing Harvard study on adult development. It's been monitoring the happiness of more than 700 original participants who were Harvard undergraduates or young men from inner city Boston neighborhoods. It later included their partners and now their children. It started in 1938. If you're counting, that's 85 years of never ending research. A study that proves it's not fame nor fortune that brings happiness, but having personal relationships, as he wrote in his book, The Good Life. And the study also shows happiness can be a matter of life or death. What we understand is that the benefits of relationship begin with that sense that somebody has my back, somebody will be my safety net. Because all of us face challenges all the time in life and having someone to go to, we feel is an essential component of well-being. Why of well-being? What do you mean? To make us sicker or healthier? It makes us sicker. We found when we wanted to predict who was gonna stay healthy, as we followed people all the way through their lives, who was gonna be healthy and happy? The people who had the warmest relationships with other people in their 50s were the ones who were most likely to stay healthy and still be in this world in their 80s. But we live in a world of advertising that promises happiness from buying things, be it the newest fashionable purse or the newest model car. And I look at that and I think the message is that's my route to happiness, and you get it all day long. Exactly. It's a kind of cultural haze that we are so surrounded by that we don't even notice it. Mm -hmm. We're getting all these messages all day long about buying things that will make us happy. And that turns out not to be true from what we know from research. Well, your research says you can buy it, but it's not going to make sustained happiness. No. No, but experiences and experiences with other people are much more likely to make us happy and make us happy for longer. And the study found a crucial difference between men and women and their abilities to nurture those critical relationships. Women and girls learn to pay attention to each other and to their relationships. And so girls learn to do a lot of things cooperatively. Boys play games together. They do, th they do activities together, but they're less socialized to worry about each other, to confide in each other. And in fact, there's some research that boys often start out having confidants as friends, but when they get into later adolescence, it doesn't feel so manly, so they stop doing that. And of all people, even Dr. Waldinger worries that he was getting that part wrong. One of the things I've learned from my own research is that I need to be more active in keeping contact with my friends, because otherwise I was leaving it all to my partner, mm -hmm. and I was worried that one day I would just wake up and turn around and say, I don't have any of my own friendships anymore. Not that rocket science, just go somewhere with a friend. No, and that's what I say all the time. I don't do rocket science. But there is a science of happiness. And that's what University of Colorado Associate Professor June Gruber teaches and studies in her Boulder, Colorado lab, where I was hooked up to physiological sensors by graduate student Cindy Viamava. It's going to expand, and when you breathe out, it's going to contract and it's going to measure your breathing. Other sensors monitor heart rate, blood flow, brain imaging, even sweaty palms, all measuring reactions from flashing images, good or bad. So you're really talking about kind of our public face. Oh, doctor, I feel really happy. 
But this will tell you a different story if our body is not feeling that same emotion. And not in sync, right, with what we say we're feeling. And the research is already showing surprising results. Everybody watching this is going to want to ask one question. How do I get to be happy? I think what we're discovering is that the science of happiness is telling us things that may go against our intuitions. So, for example, one of the ways to become happy is actually not to try to feel joyful every day or to strive to be excited or proud. That can also include sometimes feeling sad, sometimes feeling afraid. So, trying to be happy is really the exactly wrong thing to do. Absolutely. So, we say that the harder you try to be happy, paradoxically, the less happy you set yourself up to be. It's a beautiful Colorado day. Yeah. She teaches that happiness can be had with just a walk outside. You feel better. You feel happy. Yeah, indeed. And you feel a sense of happiness that's sustainable and that really promotes a kind of authentic sense of well-being. And finally, a last piece of happiness wisdom attributed to John Lennon, who wrote, Count your age by friends, not years. Count your life by smiles, not tears. For CBS Saturday Morning, Barry Peterson, Denver. I was struck by that one line when she said, Tr trying to be happy mm -hmm. is the wrong thing yeah. to do. Like if you're out like, oh, this is the only thing that's gonna make me like, happy, I'm gonna do that, it's probably not. Or yeah. even if you're sad saying, okay, I gotta be happy, I gotta smile. Some days it's okay to frown. Be true in your emotion is like, what I took yeah. that too. Yeah, like roll, the, roll with it. Yeah, well, yeah. What's, what it says to me is live in the moment. Yeah. yeah, just live. And collect more friends. Yay. And get outside. There it is. Right? Now we start listing things. And get a dog. <laughs> a dog helps too. Get a dog. Oh boy, do get not dog. say that, Dana. Get Some of us have children begging for them. Get a dog. Victoria, Jack, Jeez. you need a dog. Oh my need lord.